You're watching The Week Ahead with Jared Davis from Smile Global Management. Jared, let's start off with the US. Now, do you think this week's US retail sales will show a rise in July for the sixth consecutive month? Or what events will you be closely watching? Um, well, in terms of the US data, uh, basically, we are looking at, um, we do think that there will be an improvement, yeah. We think it will kind of carry on. Um, improving however the market at the moment isn't really in our view it isn't really focused on on that type of data the market particularly from the u.s is looking at inflation data and employment data so um you know we think that it will show an improvement and consumer sentiment um will start to improve because i think those uh the, the actions on the fed got the taper in um talk of interest rate hikes etc etc all that stuff is getting kind of um, the market excited and, and obviously everyone looks at you know how things have been performing so this is uh, we do feel this will trickle through to consumer uh, consumer sentiment you know over the next few weeks and months and I think this will kind of show an improved um, outlook in the data but uh, in terms of a trading perspective I'm not really expecting this to move the markets to any significant degree the Bank of England will publish its quarterly inflation report. Now, Jared, how do you think the pound will be trading after its release? Okay, so there's two scenarios, basically, for the quarterly inflation report. The first scenario is that they kind of stamp at, remain as they are, um, update their forecasts, and basically maintain their view that um, any, any kind of hike in interest rates or any march towards those rate hikes is data dependent, so they're just going to keep, you know, kind of wait and see. If that happens, I think the market will be a little bit disappointed. I think the pound could sell off a little bit, down towards 167 against the dollar. Uh, the second scenario is actually what we're expecting, um, and that is for the, the Bank of England to use this as an opportunity to kind of upgrade their tone, so to speak. So they've been kind of neutral, dovish up to now, um, but with the recent run of data, we're expecting to say, you know, start recognizing this and actually start talking about, you know, maybe <clears throat> it is the time for rate hikes or even at least just mention that there's been a, a, a debate about it within the MPC, um, that, you know, it's something they've been talking about. Even if they haven't kind of agreed to do it yet, it's something that, a few, you know, one or two members are now starting to kind of bring up in conversation. But if this is, the, if, that, if that does happen, that would be considered quite hawkish by the market. And I think the pound will actually rally against the dollar uh, back up towards the 170 level over the next few days. So it really does depend on what is said. Uh, personally, I'm expecting a pound rally, but... You know, if, if the BOE decide not to surprise the markets and to kind of stay as they are, we, we could actually see the pound sell off. But, but whatever happens, if there is a sell off, I think it was only temporary. And I do think um, there's plenty more upside for the pound, uh, whatever happens, uh, you know, in the long run. We also have some inflation and industrial production out of Europe. Of course, many will be closely watching inflation. So, Jared, tell us more. Well, I think it's, I mean, inflation at the moment is uh, the big one from Europe. I mean, obviously, you've got you know all the other stuff like production and stuff like that gdp but i think really is a, it's all about inflation and as long as that as long as inflation in the eu remains weak uh, or well below that the ecb's target um the ecb are going to have to do more they get you know they, the work the absolute you know most positive thing that could happen at the moment is for inflation to kind of stay where it is and the ecb just do nothing um in which case you know interest rates are negative it's all still pretty bearish for the euro. And the worst thing is, if inflation gets, starts getting weaker and dropping below these levels that we've seen, then the ECB are going to have to then be forced to do more, maybe do some kind of QE, which again is only going to weaken the euro. So whatever happens really, um, we're looking for this data to remain kind of stagnated and weak, and we're looking for that to then prompt the euro, ECB to actually act more. But I'm not really expecting the ECB to do anything this year. Uh, maybe towards the end of 2014, like November, December, they might start looking at some kind of new measures, you know, possibly QE. But until then, they're probably not going to do much. Um, and the data itself is what's probably going to keep the euro dollar pressed down. We have an array of Japanese data out this week and we had Chinese inflation out recently. So what are your views on Asian markets this week? Um, well, the one, obviously, um, for the Chinese perspective, Chinese perspective, I think uh, last week we had, I think it was CPI came out on Saturday. Chinese CPI actually came out as expected, about 2.3%. Um, so 
that basically kind of there's a there's a rumor in the market regarding Chinese inflation that the the POBC might actually or they are leaning towards some kind of more easing bias. The data and stuff that has been coming out lately has kind of led markets to think that maybe they'll they're going to do they're going to make their monetary policy a little bit looser. So obviously off the back of that we would expect the one to weaken uh, in anticipation of that kind of action from the bank. In terms of the Japanese yen. Um, a lot of few, I've noticed a few bank reports this week suggesting that basically the BOJ probably won't do any more to their easing, so they're not going to add to their QE. They're going to keep printing money, as they have been, but they're not going to increase that amount uh, this year. When At the beginning of 2014, a lot of people thought that maybe they would expand it. Uh, Japanese data hasn't been that great, and there's been some comments from Kuroda lately that's actually stated that they may be losing confidence in their ability to reach that 2% target. So. Jared, as always, a pleasure. Thanks for coming on today. Well, viewers, do stay tuned. Do not go anywhere as we have plenty more just like this heading your way. See you very soon.